We're tracking the investigation into a crash that killed one person and sent another to the hospital. A family that was killed in a fire in Maysville last week was laid to rest here at Camp Nelson. The Breeders' Cup, a UK home football game, and Halloween all happening this Saturday. We'll show you how police are preparing to keep everyone safe. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. A crash killed one person, sent another person to the hospital this afternoon. The crash involving one car happened on Meadowbrook Road near the Eastern Kentucky University Farm in Richmond. We're told the car hit a utility pole and snapped in half. WKYT's Victor Puente is tracking the investigation in our top story at 5. There were two people inside that truck when it crashed, but emergency crews had some difficulties getting to them because of the power lines running above the pole they had hit. Kentucky State Police say the crash happened just before 1 o'clock when a pickup with two people inside went off of Meadowbrook Road and hit a utility pole. One of those people died. The other has been airlifted to a hospital. Witnesses say that pole was sparking and a small fire started near the top, preventing them from getting to the people inside. Once the power was cut to those lines, firefighters were able to cut the cab of the truck open. State police say the coroner pronounced a man who was in that truck dead here at the scene. A woman was airlifted. They say they don't know yet who was driving. The people who pulled up on that crash say all they could do was talk to that woman while they waited for paramedics. I wanted to help her, but I couldn't really because I, I mean, I didn't know what to do. Um, I guess the first thought was if that pole came down, what would we do? Because it was like sparking and going to catch fire. State police say they're still trying to notify the family of the man who died. They say they don't believe the two people are from Madison County, but they do believe they're fairly local. In Madison County, Victor Puente, WKYT. Meadowbrook Road was closed for more than three hours while that pole was replaced. It reopened about 4 15. A Marine veteran who died trying to save her children from a fire was laid to rest. The burial for Lori Doppelhauer and two of her children took place at Camp Nelson in Jessman County this afternoon. That fire happened last week in Maysville. Our Sam Smith shows us the final tribute to the family. The family was buried today with full honors, with an escort from the funeral home in Pulaski County to a gravesite ceremony here at Camp Nelson. The caskets for Lori Doppelhauer and her sons were led to their grave sites by Honor Guard volunteers, with friends and family following behind. Doppelhauer and her children were killed last week in a fire at their Maysville home. The fire started behind a neighbor's house and spread to their home. The neighbor was killed too. Doppelhauer served in the Marines. It's why she was buried here along with her children. Camp Nelson Honor Guard volunteers were happy to pay her this honor. Well, they all stand out, but uh, this is really going to stand out because this woman, you know, she was a, a, an Iraqi war hero. She come home, you know, they tried to stop her from going in after her children. She fought off the police to go in. Uh, whenever uh, she found her, her baby, uh, they went in. She, she had her baby in her arms and laying next to the other two children. So uh, she was definitely a warrior. Once a Marine, always a Marine. You never leave nobody behind. It was an emotional day for the family here. They want to thank everyone for their support during this tough time. In Jessamyn County, Sam Smith, WKYT. Members of the family were presented an American flag. Dozens of people attended today's ceremony. You are going to need the rain jacket the next few days. We have wind and rain headed our direction. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking the changes for us. Chris? Yeah, right on cue. Those changes arriving uh, today in the form of some clouds and then those scattered showers into southern Kentucky. Really going to pick up the pace as we go into later tonight and into the day tomorrow. A little look outside at the station here over top of Hamburg Pavilion. Cloudy skies. Looks like it could rain at any moment. And you know what? Rains are not too far away from us. 58 chilly degrees. Winds are coming at us from the northeast right now at around 8 miles per hour. That's adding a little extra chill to the air. But again, across most of the Lexington area, 
we are dry for now. Watch the rain shield expand northward into parts of central Kentucky. Now, what's out there now is very, very light from 64 and points to the south. But once you get into southern Kentucky, as you see, the darker greens begin to show up here on Defender. That's where the rains are getting a little steadier. Now we get into Tennessee, and the rains are really picking up the pace a little bit. All of this coming from what is left of Patricia down into the northern Gulf of Mexico and toward Louisiana. The old pipeline of moisture coming out of the Gulf is aimed right towards central and eastern Kentucky over the next couple of days. Here's your future radar. We go hour by hour through the overnight and watch how quickly the rains really engulf most of central and eastern Kentucky. So the heavy rain threat is going to increase, gusty winds, and eventually some thunder and lightning joining the mix just for good measure. We go toward the weekend, and another system is going to try to take aim at central and eastern Kentucky, guys. That's an important forecast, obviously. Halloween weekend, Breeders' Cup weekend. I'll touch more on that when I come back here in just a few minutes. He just stole the words right out of mouth. We're talking about it. The Breeders' Cup, a U.K. home game against Tennessee and, of course, Halloween. And it is going to be one busy Saturday across Lexington with thousands of extra people in town. I think this is a first for Lexington. WKYT Sean Moody shows us what's being done to make sure that everyone can enjoy all the fun safely. Lexington police say this will be just about as close as it gets to a full deployment for them. They say it will be a lot like a Final Four weekend. Lexington police are used to working Keeneland traffic, but not quite like this. You know, it will be at Keeneland, but it's not be a typical Keeneland meet. Keeneland officials expect between 42,000 and 45,000 people on the grounds each day of the event. To put that into perspective, the average daily attendance of the fall meet that just ended was just over 14,000. Arrive early and be patient. If you want to park on site there at Keeneland, you need a special parking pass. If you show up without one, you'll be turned away. There are shuttle buses running from the Kentucky Horse Park, Whitaker Bank Ballpark, and the Cox Street parking lot downtown. Breeders' Cup at Keeneland isn't the only big event in town this weekend. There's also the festival downtown and the UK Tennessee football game at Commonwealth Stadium. Then there's Halloween. For Lexington police, this will be all hands on deck. We have trick or treat going on in the neighborhood, so our patrol units, uh, we're adjusting some of those schedules for second shift to handle downtown. First and third shifts will be held over to help respond to some of the stuff in the neighborhoods. Our typical calls for service, all of our traffic personnel, special operations, community services, pretty much our bureau investigations being pulled out, our bureau administration folks that help run our training academy. Just about everybody that's available, we are utilizing. Thank you. And again, police really want to stress that you need to figure out where you're going before you leave. That way you don't end up in one of those places you're not supposed to be, and then they have to reroute you. They say that'll make it a lot easier on everyone. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. All right, patience, that's the key word. Now, if you do have a Keeneland parking pass, you'll either go in from Rice Road or Van Meter Road. The main gate will be for taxis, Uber, and Lyft cars only. So, a lot of changes, a lot of things to think of. Plan your routes for sure. Exactly. Well, tonight we'll learn where each horse will run in the Breeders' Cup Classic on Saturday. The post position draw is getting ready to take place at Keeneland. WKYT's Lee K. Howard is live for us there with a preview. Lee K. Sam and Amber, for the first time ever, the Breeders' Cup will race here in Lexington. Out at Keeneland. The post position draw for both the Breeders' Cup Classic and the Distaff will take place in just over an hour. And while this will be the first time the Breeders' Cup has ever run in Lexington, it is a homecoming of sorts for the biggest race in thoroughbred racing. Having the Breeders' Cup in Lexington has been a real homecoming for us as an organization. Our roots were here in Lexington. We were created by John Gaines, who founded Gainesway Farm. He announced the Breeders' Cup in the spring of 1982 after the Derby, and it brought together all the breeding farms here in the, in the state. So bringing our biggest event back home to its cradle has been just truly amazing for us. And it is shaping up to be an impressive field, maybe the best ever for the Breeders' Cup Classic in the history of the race. Here's a look at the field highlighted by, of course, Triple Crown winner American Pharaoh, two-time Breeders' Cup winning mayor Beholder, and then, of course, there is Keen Ice, the very horse that beat American Pharaoh in the Traverse Stakes. So this will be a big race. The post position draw, like I said, will take place at 620 out here at Keeneland. John Calipari will be here to do the honors of drawing the horses. We will have much more on the big draw coming up a little bit later in the next half hour. But for now, reporting from Keeneland, Lee K. Howard, WKYT.
Lee Kay, thank you. And we are helping get you ready for the Breeders' Cup. Join Dave Baker and Jennifer Palumbo for breakfast at the Breeders' Cup from 7 to 10 tomorrow and Wednesday mornings on the CW Lexington. The trial began this morning for a man charged in a Lexington murder. Police say Jeffrey Morris shot and killed Anthony Carter in June of 2014. That shooting happened on Chestnut Street. U.S. Marshals arrested Morris in Arizona five months later. His trial is scheduled to last through Thursday. Police have released the picture of a suspect in a robbery near the Eastern Kentucky University campus. Our county by county coverage begins in Madison County. Police say a man with a gun walked into the university shell station Saturday night and demanded the clerk open the register. The clerk ran to the rear of the store and called police. K9 units tracked the robber to the rear lot of Keene Hall. The holdup triggered an alert on the EKU campus. A Rowan County father accused of neglecting his eight children has entered a plea deal. Jonathan Prater pled guilty to six counts of criminal abuse and nine counts of wanton endangerment. Prater and Edith Strange were arrested in January of last year. Police say they were withholding food from their children and their home had no heat, running water or electricity. The Moorhead News reports Strange pled guilty to the same charges as Prater and received six years in prison. Prater will be sentenced to 10 years. Tomorrow, UK basketball fans will have another peek at this year's team. The Wildcats hit the floor at Rupp Arena, and UK coach John Calipari is looking forward to it. WKYT's Rob Bromley is here now to tell us why. Hi, Rob. Hello, and Coach Cal puts his team on the Rupp Arena floor for the blue white game tomorrow night. Calipari is eager to see what his squad looks like in front of a crowd. Now, he didn't have a summer trip this year, but he was able to get his team practicing earlier this month, and he's thankful for that. Thank goodness we started on October 2nd. Could you imagine if we had started on the 13th, 14th, or 15th like we normally do? And then after five or six days, I say, I don't like this. Let's change, which is what I've done. And we're going to go another direction. That meant we'd have had four days before we play on national television. Oh, my gosh. All right, it'll be 7 o'clock tip tomorrow night. The SEC Network is handling the coverage. Rob, thank you. The Cats' first exhibition game is next Monday night against Ottawa. More than 100 people died after an earthquake ripped through northern Afghanistan. The quake measured a 7.5 and could be felt as far as Pakistan and India. The epicenter was located in a provident province which borders Pakistan and China. People have been sifting through the rubble looking for any survivors. One person is still missing after a whale watching boat sank. 27 people were on board when the boat capsized off Vancouver Island in Canada. Five people died. All of them were from the United Kingdom. The mayor there says the coastal community is in shock. Today is uh, very much a day focused on coming together, of supporting the, the, the survivors, the crew, the company, the whale watching industry, all of the search and rescue professionals that were involved, everybody who was on scene. Authorities are trying to figure out why the boat sank. The company that operates the boat also had a deadly boat crash in 1998. A judge has ordered a psychological evaluation for a woman accused of driving her car into a crowd at a parade. Saturday's crash killed four people during Oklahoma State's homecoming parade. Adesha Chambers faces four preliminary counts of murder as prosecutors consider formal charges. A judge set her bond at $1 million. The Mississippi state flag is no longer flying at Ole Miss. Officials quietly took it down this morning. Student senators voted to have the flag taken down several days ago because it features the Confederate battle emblem. The flag will be placed in the university's archives along with resolutions calling for its removal. The front runner in the race for the Republican presidential nomination is now trailing in a key state. A new Mammoth University poll shows Ben Carson leading Donald Trump in Iowa 32 percent to 18 percent. The two will take center stage during the third GOP debate that's on Wednesday night. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. According to a new report, if you eat processed meat or red meat, you're putting yourself at risk for cancer. That's the findings from the World Health Organization report released today. Tina Krause takes a closer look. World cancer researchers say people who fill up on processed foods like bacon, sausage, and hot dogs face a real risk of colon, stomach, and other cancers. 
Scientists from the World Health Organization say eating processed meats, including those that are smoked, cured, or salted, poses the same cancer risk as smoking. To put that in perspective, the lifetime risk of colon cancer is 5%. If you have a hot dog every day, your risk goes to 6%, so it's very, very small. While doctors have long warned against eating too much meat, the WHO report goes a step further, classifying processed meat as cancer-causing and red meat as a likely cause of cancer. Red meat has always been a part of my diet, and I don't plan or intend on changing my diet. It doesn't worry me. If you look at my figure, I'll just eat food anyway. But it's like anything else. As long as you're taking it in moderation. The North American Meat Institute is calling the report dramatic and alarmist and argues cancer is a complex disease not caused by single foods. But the WHO says it has hard evidence that came from evaluating 800 studies from several continents about meat and cancer. Tina Kraus, CBS News, London. The new report says grilling, pan frying, or cooking red meat at high temperatures produces the highest amounts of chemicals suspected to cause cancer. Nissan is expanding a recall for possible fuel leaks to include another 59,000 cars. The recall now covers certain 2013 to 2016 Altimas and some 2016 Maximas. Fuel can leak from a seal between the gas tank and the fuel sending unit, causing a fire. The problem was found in a crash test, and there have been no reports of leaks or fires. Dealers will fix the problem for free.